So my name is Simon Duffy. Um, I um, help set up Citizen Network, which is a global community um, working for a world where everyone matters. And um, I, it's fantastic that some of you here are, are also members of Citizen Network. And if you're not a member of Citizen Network, please do join. It's free to join for individuals and for groups. Um, and I'm very um, pleased that we, one of the projects we work on is a project called Day Centres Without Walls, and that we're working with um, the association in Rithibno um, on this project, which was, uh, when it was imagined, it was imagined before COVID. And so we imagined bringing people together in the real world. I was looking forward to coming to Crete and meeting different people who were thinking about how for people with intellectual disabilities, instead of thinking about people being locked away or put into special places, centers, homes, how people can be full empowered citizens and how day centers can help people be citizens and how day centers can, in a way, break down the walls. Just a reminder, I'm going to mute everybody. <laughs> um, so this project, Day Centers Without Walls, brought us together, but, but really we've had to stay very much apart during the project because we've had to do everything um, through Zoom, really. Although um, some of us did manage to meet in Lithuania and we did start the project in, in Athens right at the beginning. And it's been lovely to work with Irene and Pavlos during this project. And one of the purposes of the project is to find good examples, good practice, and then share it freely with the world. And so this webinar is a chance for us to share good practice from Crete with the world. The, um, the, sorry, I should click this little button here for the moment. This, this webinar is also going to be recorded. So um, if you don't want to be seen on, on the screen, turn your camera off um, and do stay muted throughout the um, presentations. We're going to have four presentations and then we're going to have a chance for questions. But you can also put in questions at any time in the chat function. Um, so you can write those questions in English, Greek or any language. We can try and make sense of them. So don't feel don't feel you have to put everything in English. You can put it in any language. Um, uh, and we will try and use those questions, either address them in the chat or use them as part of the conversation later on. Um, have I forgotten anything? So, oh, I should remember that this project was funded by the European Union Erasmus Plus program, which is very important, and very valuable. Um, you could imagine how sad it is that living in England, that these opportunities are now restricted for us. Don't leave the European Union, however terrible <laughs> it may appear at times. Stay in the European Union is my advice. But anyway, um, I think that's everything. So I think I'm going to um, invite Irene to speak first and she will present her presentation and then there'll be a short film. Irene, do you want to unmute yourself and I will... Thank you, Simon. Thank you. Uh, thanks uh, to Citizens Network. Uh, we are here and uh, very well organized. Uh, thank everyone for being here. Uh, we hope that uh, more people will come and they will have uh, more entries. Uh, I'm uh, speaking uh, uh, as a legal representative uh, of the Association of Parents and Friends of People with uh, Autism Disorders of Rethymno uh, in Crete and South Greece. And uh, we're very happy 
that we are taking part to that uh, European Erasmus Plus uh, KA2 uh, project uh, that uh, was named as uh, Day Center Without Wall and met uh, very important people uh, like Simon Taffy and uh, all the other people that took part in uh, that uh, uh, project uh, that uh, does uh, uh, see many things from other countries uh, and uh, take uh, more good practices uh, uh, about uh, working um, experience uh, and uh, uh, working inclusion of uh, adult people uh, with disabilities. Uh, so we are here from uh, 2007 and uh, we have over uh, uh, over uh, the 160 families in Rethne municipality. Uh, we have a day center that uh, uh, we have uh, uh, kids uh, from five to 18 years old. Uh, we will have a presentation later about that. It's also uh, another uh, action that uh, we um, say that Kinoniko Stekia Mea. And uh, then there we have adult people uh, with um, autism and intellectual disability. And uh, we, all, of course, try their education and their social in, uh, inclusion and quality of life of all the people. Uh, that are our aims. Um, and uh, uh, we are a parental organization, so this was uh, obvious. That obviously, we uh, tried very hard. Uh, to um, uh, create things that uh, create uh, activities that will help uh, our kids that uh, are growing up and becoming adults uh, uh, to, um, to create opportunities uh, uh, of work opportunities. So we had uh, the World for All project uh, that was a structure uh, structured uh, certification project for people with intellectual disabilities uh, and uh, we tried to um, facilitate uh, their access to work. Uh, we had to do many steps to organize something like this uh, in uh, Greece uh, because in Greece uh, the working experiences of people with intellectual disabilities are awful and they are very low, um, lower than in other European countries. Uh, so we tried to find the proper project uh, that was uh, uh, where we were happy to um, uh, uh, be chosen uh, by the EA Grants Funded uh, Active Citizens Fund project. So we launched uh, that uh, project. And uh, when we started, uh, we were and, uh, um, so sure about uh, what uh, we had to do because it was so much work and uh, so much many things to think uh, to communicate uh, with uh, parents uh, because this is a very difficult world uh, work uh, to communicate with parents and persuade them that their uh, people, uh, adult people, uh, may take part to a cert certified project uh, and uh, may work uh, to raise public awareness uh, because uh, our community um, doesn't know how, doesn't have the know how uh, to put people with intellectual disabilities uh, to work. Uh, and uh, the other uh, steps were to, in, to make interviews uh, of people that uh, wanted uh, to be in our team and uh, to start uh, organizing the training uh, uh, with experts uh, in uh, hotel services uh, that uh, would educate our people. Uh, and we have... Uh, to support also people and families uh, uh, to know what we do and uh, to organize how these people will be certified um, from uh, an education organization uh, that uh, will be a real certification and they could uh, work uh, to hotel services. Uh, Rethymno, we are very lucky that uh, we live in Rethymno because uh, it's one of the most important tourist uh, destinations in Greece and in the island of Crete. So uh, our, our organization focused on uh, this path and uh, we believe that among the thousands of employers and employees, uh, there is 
enough space uh, for our people with intellectual disabilities. Um, we communicate with a certified educational center and then uh, a team of uh, great professionals uh, started working with our people. And uh, so we had nine adult people with intellectual disabilities uh, certified in the Work for All project. Uh, this was a, a, a difficult and uh, much more difficult because of the pandemic, because we stopped uh, the um, daily is, uh, uh, course uh, for two months and a half and uh, we had to start it again in 1920 uh, and um, in this uh, stop we had to have webinars with uh, people uh, to focus um, uh, on them uh, because they felt very disappointed. They thought that uh, they would lose the opportunity uh, to be with us uh, again. Uh, they were very afraid uh, of uh, COVID-19. And um, okay, we managed it and uh, people, our people uh, finished uh, last summer and uh, they learned in many hours cooking, uh, pastry and baking, room service, uh, buffet services, bar being bartenders and waiters. Uh, some photos very quick because uh, I know that the webinar's uh, time is uh, uh, strict uh, to us. They were very happy, uh, didn't forget any time anything uh, standing five hours per day didn't say any day no no one was uh, tired even though they had moving problems so they have that intellectual problems they didn't uh, know how to communicate uh, what they need uh, they were the perfect students uh, of uh, all the organizations that had uh, about uh, 800 uh, typical adults and only 10 uh, adults with disabilities. Um, the step of three uh, was uh, difficult enough also for us because uh, we tried to have practice in hotels and uh, uh, our people to work after the certification to catering or social events uh, because they, we had to make them feel very strong, uh, to make them feel that they have the capacity to do that, to make them feel that uh, uh, they could uh, gain the competition, they have the knowledge, uh, they can be sociable and uh, uh, they can do it and uh, we had uh, them uh, make them obey some rules uh, that it was uh, a difficult path uh, to choose some um, more photos just to from uh, the education uh, we're happy that be because we did it uh, they felt they, we, they can do that. Uh, we had the easy to read method uh, to um, educate them. Uh, so we used uh, many adapted visual text, uh, task uh, timetables, uh, and uh, we worked on their social manners, uh, the dress code, uh, the feelings that they had uh, because they were very anxious, uh, and uh, also that they could uh, feel uh, they could um, have achievable objectives. So they sat, they lived uh, something that uh, they couldn't live with. They served people and uh, we had them in uh, real conditions uh, till uh, they had uh, their certification day, uh, which was uh, the best uh, day of their lives. Uh, all the lights uh, were on them uh, and uh, were very happy. And, uh, of course, uh, through the pandemic, we tried uh, through the project, uh, the A grants project, uh, Work for All, uh, make a social enterprise, Kipseli. And uh, I will, uh, uh, Pavlos Melisinos, uh, who is, uh, is uh, responsible for Kipseli, which means hive. Uh, B, Beehive, uh, will uh, talk, say some things about that. Yes. Um... Actually, I say uh, some uh, words for how born the idea. Uh, the social enterprise Kipseli uh, was one of uh, our main thoughts for the creation of the proposal for the project uh, Work for All. 
Uh, we know the employers and companies uh, very often are suspicious regarding the employment of people with disabilities. That fact has caused a high unemployment among people with disabilities that reaches the 70% and more in Greece. This fact made us create the Kipseli social enterprise. We'll be able to integrate and include adults with disabilities with flexible section of work that will be, uh, that, uh, will be created uh, in order to support them with training seminars, to give them the opportunity to be part of a, a working framework for some time in order to lay the groundwork for their integration. Afterwards, they will be able to achieve their, their participation in another more official work environment easily and in an organized way with the support the possibly needed. Uh, we also have a supervisory role and create opportunities to the market in order to accept a person with disabilities in their workplace. Finally, with the cooperative, uh, we will be able to create a framework of cooperation with the local public uh, authorities, increasing the acceptance of people with intellectual disability at work. And the community, our community in Rethymnon, uh, start to see uh, some people with disabilities to work. However, we set very specific goals in the education of people with disabilities. Firstly, highly certified education in order to gain, to gain a competitive profile and to be able to be equal members in, a, in the labor market to feel useful. And Price, Irini, you can continue. Simon, thank you. Ευχαριστούμε πολύ for your time today and for your help for the organized to at the webinar. Um, in Kipsei Social Enterprise, uh, we are starting a big project of recycling, plastic recycling uh, with the municipality of Redigno. Uh, we start uh, in uh, October. And also we had uh, some people working after uh, their certification. Uh, one of our people worked in a bakery. Uh, another worked uh, in some uh, events, uh, catering events. Uh, in uh, summer, in summer hotel uh, through the summer, and uh, uh, another worked uh, as a bartender, helping uh, a bar, a beach bar. Uh, so um, we we think that we we can do more uh, uh, through that. Uh, why we do all this? Uh, we do all this because uh, we are parents, and uh, we live uh, we lived the yesterday with our people with our kids and that became adults. Uh, we live today with them. Maybe we won't live tomorrow with them, uh, but uh, we would like to uh, have joy, to live a good life and uh, be very happy. Uh, for us, uh, the quality of their life, uh, to live on their own, uh, to have a working space and a living space, um, not, is not only a dream, uh, but uh, it's a truth that uh, will become truth. Uh, something that we live and uh, uh, we focus on that. Uh, love and acceptance is all we need. Uh, it says Irini in a waffle, holding a waffle in the heart shape. Uh, thank you very much for all. We will see a video. I We won't talk uh, in that. It's only two, two minutes because Simon, I will tell you to... Um, uh, to stop it, uh, not to uh, have it all. And uh, our people uh, said uh, how they feel. Uh, they feel very strong. They feel that they gain uh, so much of uh, their education. This is the first education they had in their lives. They feel that they, now they have uh, uh, the certification to work. And uh, uh, they feel brave and uh, nice uh, being all together and being in the society. Thank you very much for everything. Okay. Oh play um you can hear me correctly afton i can't see it yeah oh, 
Ειρήνη, τι λες. Κυρία, εμείς εξελιχθήκαμε και γίναμε κάτι παραπάνω έτσι να πάω για όλα στα μήνια. Πολύ ωραία. Μανώλη, τι λες. Σου άρεσε. Ε, τι σου άρεσε πιο πολύ. Μπαρίστας, ε. Α, πολύ ωραία. Μιχάλη. Τι σου άρεσε στη σχολή, μαγειρική. μαγειρική. Κάποια συνταγή που σου άρεσε πολύ από αυτές. Ωραία. Ο Φραγκίσκος. Α, με την κυρία Ελένη, ε. Η Ραφαέλα. Ε, Όλα. Ωραία. Παναγιώτης. Πάρα μου άρεσε. Και ο Μπαρίστα. Πάρα πολύ ωραία. I'm on. We can stop it now. It's okay. Should I pause it, Irene? Really? <laughs> Do you want to add anything? I mean, it was it's making me hungry. No, no, it's uh, all the cooking uh, thing of uh, that day. But uh, I would like just to thank you. Uh, I think uh, the videos cannot show what we lived, uh, the people that uh, we were there. Thank you very much. No, fellow star, thank you very much. Um, that was brilliant. Um, so our next speaker is Evie. So, Evie, would you like to um, talk through your slides? I'm going to just Hi. You. Let me see if it works this time. Can you see it? Can you see the slideshow? Yes. No, well, you, no, you need to click the, you're in screen sharing mode, but you need to select the slide. No, I have already selected, but... Uh... Mm. I am screen sharing, <laughs> but maybe it needs some time. I'm not sure. Oh, there we go. What it's, about now? Yes, it's perfect. Oh, okay. So, hello. I am Evie. I'm a social worker and I'm the manager of the day center of Club Amea Fresno. I would like to welcome you all as well. And uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity to share my experience with you. I work at the day center for six years now, and I'm on the program of community inclusion for uh, the last four years. And uh, by program of community inclusion, I mean programs of uh, going out, uh, maybe for a coffee, for food, for sport events, learn how to make uh, pizza, bread, sandwiches, and so many more uh, by professionals, of course. Uh, so before we start, I would like uh, to talk you through my presentation. The presentation is not that big, but uh, don't worry. I just let me want to talk you through it. Uh, first, we're going to see why having fun is that important and uh, how we have chosen to organize the programs of community inclusion here in Rethymno. Uh, some examples will follow and at the end, we will see together what we gain by that. So let's start uh, uh, with seeing the importance of having fun. All right. Uh, I'm sure that we are all familiar with uh, the researches that show that people can flourish when they feel safe, when they feel valued, and uh, when they feel that they are a part of a group. 
So all these feelings evoke to having positive memories and positive memories as having fun make us and what we learn so much stronger. So by participating in a group that uh, you feel safe and you have fun with your friends, whatever you learn stays with you for longer. So let's see how we do it. First, we have a group of children that work together for some time because they, uh, before they participate at the main program in order to give them time to bond with each other, which is very crucial because uh, they really have to feel safe. When uh, we decide that the group is ready, uh, we discuss what we can do and uh, give uh, to the children space to express their opinion on what they would like to do together. So based on the discussion, uh, we communicate with businessmen that uh, would like to cooperate with us by either uh, showing us how they work and most important, uh, let us practice skills in their business. It's time we decide, and I cannot stress this enough, always together with the children, uh, what we want to do next. So before we go out, we prepare ourselves for exactly what we're going to do either by discussion, videos, and uh, sometimes we need some images that show us step-by-step step, uh, what uh, we will expect. Uh, in some cases, the professionals uh, must take uh, some pictures of the exact place that uh, we will be or uh, at the exact steps. For example, uh, we were once um, uh, at a sport event, we need uh, to show which gate we had to enter through, uh, where we would sit. So uh, there is a, a small part of planning uh, just from the professionals. Um, and then we go out and have some fun. For example, uh, we go for a coffee. Uh, we have already discussed how we order, how we ask nicely, how to pay, and let me tell you here that most uh, of children know how to use money, and if they don't, uh, we teach them before going out. Uh, in another example, uh, we wanted to learn how to make pizza for obvious reasons, so we went to a pizza place and uh, had people show us, and uh, of course, because practice makes perfect, we absolutely had to uh, do all the steps and make pizza at our own place, same uh, we did with uh, learning how to make crepes, how to make cupcakes, how to make bread, and so many, many more through these uh, four years. And for the last part, the most important, to my opinion, is what we gain by all that. So here at the Day Center, we have established a safe learning environment for children to practice their social skills. And by that, uh, we talk about problem solving, communication between them and uh, with people that don't know very well uh, how to teamwork, how to collaborate uh, and how to plan and organize. And all these come because we discuss, we decide, we plan and we prepare ourselves all together. It's not a decision that I make and children have to follow, it's something that the team will decide, will practice and do. So all these uh, skills uh, empower them and build their self-confidence uh, and build the self-confidence that anyone should have. And most important are all crucial skills for labor market that they can and will be part of it in some years, that the children will be part of it in some years. Last but not least, uh, the community interaction that takes place is very important. And because children uh, gain the sense of belonging in this community that uh, they live. And at the same time, community learns how to give them space. Uh, space to talk, space uh, to be listened, uh, space to have fun, and the most important, space to work and uh, be a full member of this community uh, when they will be older and will be able to work. And that was all. Thank you very much. Uh...
I suppose that we can discuss anything you want after uh, the presentation of Yanis as well and uh, Elenis. Yes, thank you. thank you, Evie. That was excellent, very clear, um, great presentation. Thank you. And so now we're going to go to um, Eleni. Um, and, but I think, Irene, you're going to do the screen share, aren't you? Thank you. Are you already yes. on top well, of it? I'm uh, Eleni Stamarkas. I am a special education teacher, but I'm also a member of the association of parents and friends uh, of people with autism at Rethymnos. Um, I, I'm going to talk today about uh, a handcraft workshop as a good practice that uh, our association has uh, started. And um, the purpose of the workshop uh, was uh, to develop uh, social and work skills for people with mental uh, disabilities. And by that, we want also to promote uh, working inclusion for people with uh, mental disabilities, mental disorders, or whatever you want to say it. Um, I, I will start my presentation. And uh, I have written down everything that I wanted uh, to say, and I think that I wanted to share it with everybody so it can be clear enough. Um, First of all, I, I want to speak about who we are. Um, on uh, July 2021, the association decided that we had to, to put in operation a handcraft workshop for adolescents and young adults with a cognitive uh, disabilities and mental disorders. Of course, the whole project uh, had started a few years ago when uh, parents, special education teachers, volunteers, the association, and uh, everybody else that was a friend of ours wanted to make a difference in our children's life. It was a fact at that, that time that uh, at our city, Rethymnos, there were no facilities uh, that were suitable and accessible for um, uh, young adults above 18 with uh, disabilities. So we thought that we had to do something for our children because usually after school, they didn't have an activity. They didn't have something to do. They usually stayed and spend their time at home. And uh, really their social life was very restricted at family visitings or having relations only with their relatives. So at first we focused on organizing an afternoon program for adults, young adults and uh, students above uh, um, 18 years old. And our purpose was of course uh, to socialize and entertain uh, um, our participants. And uh, I have to say that we really organized many activities that were exactly correct and customized to the needs and interests of the adults with mental disabilities. For at least uh, four years, we worked um, with uh, our young uh, adults uh, with uh, disabilities. And I think that we have done uh, enough and a uh, very good job uh, in developing their social skills. But of course, we have the knowledge now that that was not enough, that things around the globe were changing and that we had to change too. So we started to think inclusion. We started to think that uh, we had to change as an association, as a program. Um, because we knew that uh, scientists, uh, psychologists, social workers, teachers, uh, association, everybody that was involved with uh, the people with uh, disabilities were now uh, focusing on inclusion and how people with disabilities could uh, participate wholly in the social night, life. Um, people uh, were starting to think that uh, it didn't have to uh, do only with taking care of people with disabilities. Now we're talking 
about uh, taking part uh, and taking part in social life. In this new environment, we decided to, to focus on developing working skills uh, to young adults with uh, men mental uh, disabilities. And that's how our handcraft uh, workshop began. Uh, so now our workshop is organized according to the individual needs and skills and abilities that each training has. And uh, we are trying to learn our young adults with disabilities techniques uh, to create accessories, jewelries, small items for decoration, handiwork uh, gifts. And uh, we are not only learning them how to fix them so they can uh, possibly uh, in the future uh, know a technique and uh, work somewhere. Um, uh, where they can uh, create their own jewelries and accessories. We also try uh, to sell these items. And uh, so uh, we, if somebody is interested to buy it, uh, we can, uh, we are trying to sell these products uh, by the site kipseli.gr uh, that um, Pavlos Melisinos has talked before. It's a niche shop and uh, people can uh, visit it and see what uh, our uh, children and trainees have uh, done. Well, um, now, why do we think that uh, our workshop is important? We think that it's important because uh, um, we're making an effort to promote inclusion for people with disabilities, and we think that it is a human right. It's a right for them to have the opportunity to work, and we're trying through this workshop to promote it. Um, the other thing that we have realized is that people with disabilities at our workshop uh, feel really productive. And uh, they also feel that they are participating equally in the social life. And that is very important because it changed uh, the way they feel about their self. And uh, they feel useful. They feel uh, that uh, they can do things and uh, they can be independent. We also are trying uh, to develop everyday skills at our workshop. And uh, to finish why we think uh, our workshop is important, uh, we have to say uh, that um, we believe that uh, working inclusion for people with mental disabilities is not something fantastic. It's something that can be a fact. And that's why we're working on it. That's why we are promoting it and developing it. Now, it's not always easy to work with people with uh, mental disabilities. We know that. And we know it uh, very well. And that's uh, why I want to present, uh, present you some of our strategies and tips that we use at our um, workshop and help us uh, to work with um, our trainees. And um, to start, it's very important when we say things <clears throat> to our trainees that we say it clear and we don't use difficult expressions. Of course, uh, we try to be happy. We try to be positive. Uh, everybody is smiling. Everybody has passion. We are flexible. We are re very supportive. If a, a if a trainee can't uh, um, doesn't feel well or feels that he can't do a task, we try to be supportive. We change the task. And uh, um, we want uh, the person to feel that uh, he has many abilities and that he can finish what he starts. Uh, another thing is that uh, when you work with people with mental disabilities, you have to repeat instructions as many times as it, it is needed. Uh, 
and also show the techniques many times. Um, until they understand it and until uh, they will be able to do it by themselves. If now um, a task is difficult for a participant or a trainee, usually, or an activity is difficult, we usually cut it into smaller parts. That helps very much and uh, it helps because um, uh, people with cognitive disabilities uh, don't have the ability to remember too many information. So if we cut, cut an activity into smaller parts, it would be easier for them to finish um, what we had tell them to fix, uh, if it's a, a necklace, a keychain, a bracelet or whatever. Of course, uh, it is important to offer assistance for demanding uh, tasks uh, to those that need it. Um, we will not leave a participant to uh, work uh, with a, a very demanded task without help. Okay, we will be there, we will show him, we will try to help him and we will make it sure that uh, he will finish uh, what uh, he had started. Uh, what is very important at uh, groups like ours uh, is that the members of the group must understand the rules of the group. And uh, they must also understand what is and what is not an acceptable um, behavior. Uh, what uh, that means is that um, our participants uh, have to go on with the rules. Uh, of course, uh, they have to be at the workshop by uh, the hour that we say. They have to finish what they do. They have to work uh, a certain time. Maybe it's 10 minutes. Maybe it's 20 minutes. But, uh, of course, we're trying to make them as responsible as uh, we can. Another thing that we do at our workshop is that we try to organize the place in a way that um, our trainees uh, will be concentrated on the work that they do. It's very important because uh, all of us know that people with uh, intellectual disabilities usually uh, cannot concentrate easily. So we have to be very, very careful uh, with the environment. Um, <clears throat> another thing is that uh, we do not, we, we try to work with um, people with disabilities, even if they have uh, poor social skills, even if uh, they don't have uh, so many abilities. And in this case, uh, for these participants, we have a personal assistant. We have somebody that is with that person and helps him and make even that person feel that can be productive. Now, we think that uh, these tips and uh, strategies are very important even uh, for uh, workplaces uh, that have uh, employees uh, with uh, mental disabilities and uh, we think that it's something that we have to promote too. Now, uh, to end, I would like to say that uh, through this workshop, we have an aspiration. We, we are thinking th things. Uh, we are doing this because, um, for example, we want to break walls, break barriers. We want the society to realize that uh, people with mental disabilities are able to work, that they can be productive. And that's so all our policies uh, are aimed at promoting inclusion for people with disabilities at workplace. We want to make some uh, webinars, some seminars, uh, some speeches to inform uh, prospective employers about um, how important it is uh, to employ or to engage a, a person with disability. And uh, we're trying to focus on the benefits of the fact that uh, there will be some good out of this. 
And of course, uh, in the future, we would like to train and support uh, some candidates and uh, help them uh, to, um, uh, if they find a job, uh, to help them uh, uh, be there and be able to uh, go through the job. It's very important to inform families, local authorities, companies, organizations uh, that are involved uh, about uh, working inclusion. And it's very important to cooperate with them. And uh, of course, we're trying to make constructive recommendations uh, to the government because as Irini said, uh, things with um, uh, working inclusion uh, at Greece uh, for people with uh, mental disabilities uh, are not so good. Uh, there's no law that uh, promotes it. Uh, usually, uh, as Pablo said, uh, the unemployment is huge uh, at this group of people. And so we will uh, try with other organizations to change their policy. And why not to have new laws, have the right legislation that will support working um, inclusion for people with mental disabilities. Uh, this was my presentation and uh, there are some pictures so you can see what we do at uh, our place. Uh, I would like to say that um, our workshop is established as, at Kinonikos Teiki, where Pablo uh, talked about it. And uh, I will also like to say that um, Mrs. Uh, Kelly Karasuli is uh, the person that is training everybody, even me, uh, on uh, how to fix uh, accessories, jewelry, and other things. Thank you. Eleni, that was fantastic. Very clear and very passionate. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Aristotle. So, got some beautiful pictures just to enjoy. Fantastic. Thank you also to Irene for uh, running through the presentation for us and helping out. It's really appreciated. So our last speaker is uh, Yanis. Uh, Yanis is going to talk about a really interesting film project that he's been involved in. And then we're going to play a short trailer from the film. Um, and then we'll have time for questions. So remember that we're, we're going on for a, until half past. So we've got 40 minutes. So I imagine we'll have a good 30 minutes or so for discussion. So save questions or write them in the chat still. Yanis, over to you. Uh, yes, I will share my screen now so you can uh, view the, the presentation. Okay. Here you are. I think you can view it. Am I right? I yes, it looks good. It. Okay. <laughs> well, I would like to thank you for being part here, Irini, Pablo, Eleni, um, to share my experience of this uh, project. Um, today, I will talk to you um, about the creations uh, the creation of the theatrical group, uh, The Antiheroes, and about the short documentary that we create uh, along with Irini, Pablo, Saleni, and of course the association. In February 2020, we had the first meeting uh, with uh, the members of the association of people with that dysmenorethmino. Uh, they wanted to create a documentary about uh, people with disabilities and their rights for art. Um, the theme of the documentary was about how people with disabilities uh, can express uh, feelings through their hands and emotions through their hands. Uh, that was the plan of the short documentary. In the summer of the same year, 
um, after the, the first phase of the pandemic, uh, we had uh, another meeting with uh, Irini Pavlos and, uh, of course, the association. Uh, while the next day I went and I was watching um, lessons in the structure of the association. I went also and the next day. I will change the uh, here. The first shooting. Um, we prepared everything. So in September 2020, we made the first shot. Uh, the children uh, reacted very naturally uh, to the presence of the camera and they remained uh, spontaneous. I mean, there's a camera around of them in our place, but uh, no, so what? There's no problem. The reactions were so naturally, and uh, that was uh, really, really, really fantastic. Um, after the first shot, uh, we are very, very excited uh, uh, at the same time. Um, because uh, all, the, all the people there, all the children told us that they want to become actors. So uh, we had uh, about uh, 10 children told us that I want to be an actor, of course. Yeah, I want to be an actor. That's the reason I came here. Yeah, of course, I want to be, uh, be an actor. I want to play. I love play. I love to watch cinema. I love to, to watch theater. Uh, that was the reason. Uh, we are really very excited, at the same time worried because we realize that we should shape and change a little bit the, the theme of the documentary and the script. Um, of course, at the same time, uh, we thought that if they want a theatrical performance, they should have it. We changed the script and we noticed a weakness that they all want to be protagonists and uh, they love for superheroes. So came the superheroes. So we have to uh, shape the script and uh, we have to put on some uh, magic dust and create uh, the superheroes thing in the documentary. Uh, we, recorded, we recorded moments of everyday life that are really heroes, while at the same time we see them preparing for the theatrical performance on the theme of superheroes. Uh, every superhero, of course, has uh, his or her costume. Also, every superhero takes care of his mind, uh, but also of his or her body, as well as every actor. So the members were trained theatrically in order to upload a small performance uh, based on the superheroes. Uh, the shooting uh, lasted about three months. Uh, during uh, this time, we, re we realized that the protagonists taught us lessons, not we, but them. Of course, the documentary How to Train an Antihero, and you can view here the official poster of our short dog. Um, yeah, many times we were moved and many times we were anxious because it all happened uh, during a pandemic. So it was a little bit uh, difficult. Uh, uh, we have also to be very careful um, about the result. I think uh, justified us, and so came the documentary entitled How to Train an Antihero. Um, at the end of the shooting, we had two hours and a half of good shooting material that we had to compress it into 25 or 26 minutes. We had to make it short. Uh, the first screening of the film came from the important in Europe drama international uh, film festival in September 2021. And here you can see some uh, pictures of our world premiere in drama international film festival. Uh, the drama international short film festival was a unique experience, especially because we could promote the message of the movie. Everyone has the right for that. The movie was seen by a lot of people and professionals from all over the world. Uh, the film was selected and screened among uh, the three entries that uh, stood out at the Cinema Therapy Program. Uh, the screening was followed 
by a discussion on the occasion of the film and more generally on the involvement of people with disabilities in the arts and social exclusion. And so that was on the beginning and we have our anti-heroes and our future plans. Uh, I'm sure that uh, a Drama International Film Festival was only the beginning and while we are continuing to promote the documentary at festivals uh, worldwide, we decided together with the association, of course, uh, the creation of a mixed theatrical uh, a group of people with difficulties and typical development in order to present local and uh, panhellenic performances. Uh, the theatrical group called Antiheroes and uh, made its uh, first appearance a few days ago as it presented a small sample of uh, work that focuses on love entitled I Want You to Hear Me. Uh, the show with the theme of love is expected to be presented in the full version in the summer of 2022 in Greece. So that was my presentation. And of course, now if we are ready, we can view our uh, official uh, trailer. Thanks, Yanis. That was brilliant. Let me see if I can. Uh... So, yeah, if you stop sharing. Yeah, of course. And then I will share. And then Είμαι σαν αόρατος. Και πόση ώρα θα στέκομαι εκεί μας. That's fantastic. Well, I want to see that film. I'm sure lots of other I will people. send. <laughs> I will send the link. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay. Well, and first of all, I want to just congratulate all the speakers because um, you perfectly nailed the timing. Uh, I think Irene and Pavlos and I were talking yesterday. They said, oh, each talk will be about 10 minutes. I said, oh, no, it'll always go a little bit longer. Uh, but we got perfectly in an hour. So um, really now we have 30 minutes for just discussion, for debate, for questions. Um, if, you, if anybody um, wants to just speak out, you can unmute yourself and ask a question. I think I'll just put us on the, um, for me, the gallery view. Uh, so you could turn your camera on and wave, or you can put something in the chat. Um, Maybe I'll just start with a little question just to get the ball rolling. Um, and uh, well, one of my questions is about um, the state of, uh, in English, we sometimes call it self-advocacy. So people uh, with intellectual disabilities or, or other disabilities coming together and starting to, they decide what's important, they decide uh, what should happen. I can hear lots of uh, good listening in, in these talks, but I just wonder what is the, what is the state of self-advocacy in Rivimno or maybe in, in Greece as a whole at the moment? Don't know. Irene, maybe? What, what's the... In fact, um, it... Now we try to make the rules and we try to make it possible in Greece. 
uh, self-advocacy, uh, even uh, to the public law, and uh, even to people that uh, now they start, uh, to people with disabilities, that uh, uh, they start to be extrovert and uh, uh, start, start to be present uh, in public life and uh, uh, do things, uh, work, um, uh, be in uh, the school and everywhere uh, equally. Uh, so we have uh, so many things to do more. And uh, in fact, our dream is uh, doing uh, things uh, such as uh, theater, such as uh, the handcraft workshops, uh, such as uh, that Evie uh, told us about uh, teenagers that are not uh, adult yet uh, to now how to decide for themselves and uh, to be more active and uh, to feel uh, strong and uh, independent. And Evie, can I ask you a question then? You, you were working with, was it yeah, people who were still under 18 or children, young yeah. people? So are you working in a a mainstream school setting or a special school setting or outside the whole school system? How does the education system help or hinder inclusion in Rhythmno? Uh, we work at the day center, uh, which is uh, a place that uh, people with uh, children with disabilities from six years to 17 I can come and uh, have a creative time here. Uh, so we work here and then we go out for the community inclusion. But we prepare, we decide, we discuss. Uh, uh, the, the whole process uh, is at the center and then we go out. So are, are those young people also attending school? And what kind of yeah. school are they attending? Uh, some people uh, attend typical schools, uh, some people uh, uh, special education schools, uh, but um, uh, we have decided that uh, the group will be a group of teenagers, no matter if they go at a typical school or a not typical school, because this is what is important, all to work together uh, beyond uh, our own disabilities and uh, beyond our own several issues that uh, every one of us have has fantastic yeah thank you we and have made teams uh, of uh, children uh, uh, of uh, mainstream schools uh, that have a teacher that helps them uh, or uh, some uh, professional that helps them and also pupils uh, of uh, uh, special education uh, schools uh, all together, I don't know if Eleni Stamarga would like to to say more about that to the people that are not uh, from uh, Greece. We have uh, many special school uh, teachers uh, in our panel, uh, as I can see. Um, and we are all um, are focused in the same, uh, we, we are in the same path, all of us. Well, uh, I, would you like me to talk about how the school system is here at the Retinos at Greece, I will say? Yeah, I think that uh, would be really, really interesting. Okay, well, when we're talking about people with disabilities here at Greece, uh, usually we have uh, students uh, that uh, uh, you can find at special school education or at uh, typical schools. Of course, uh, when we're talking about severe disabilities like autism, cognitive uh, disabilities, uh, in maybe mental disorders, usually those kids uh, are at special school and not at the typical school. At the typical school, what um, the Greek system of education is trying to do is uh, to uh, support uh, children with autism, with ACD and uh, other disabilities, uh, maybe um, um, 
children that are blind, they can't hear. Uh, they try to support them at the main school, at the typical school. And usually there is a teacher or a professor, it, it depends on the, which grade uh, the children is, that uh, uh, will support the student. Uh, so uh, he will be able to have as many help as he needs uh, so he can uh, finish uh, school and even go to the university. I have to say here that uh, when it comes um, to students with uh, autism and we're talking there for mental disabilities, uh, things uh, at typical school, um, or okay, or quite good. But when it comes uh, time uh, for the university, it's uh, it's a little bit difficult for students with autism at uh, uh, Greece because uh, they have to follow the system that uh, other students follow. They have to write examination, or they have to be examined uh, orally. Um, that many times is very difficult for these students and it's a little bit unfair because uh, uh, the Greek system um, uh, gives a 5% uh, for people with disabilities to enter the university, but it doesn't include uh, people with autism. And there is a problem there. Uh, I think that when it comes to intellectual uh, disabilities, uh, things that Greece, uh, not only uh, at education and at work, uh, is a little bit uh, difficult. And there are many, many things to be done. But uh, we are very, um, uh, how can I say it? I think that um, we're optimists. We are optimists that things are going on, you know, that uh, they're going better. They're not like they it was uh, 10 years ago. And uh, I think that with associations like ours here at Rechnos and others at Greece, that we will make an effort and we will try to do everything it has to be so education will be uh, the best for our children. Thank that's, you, Lenny. I, I don't know if it was clear enough, but uh, also that's here how the in system Rethno, is here. We're very lucky in uh, our uh, city uh, to have uh, very close communication uh, with uh, all the school uh, of that uh, our kids are going. Uh, so uh, we step uh, on the same path and uh, we go in the same way uh, to self-advocacy and uh, to help them. Uh, also, okay, we are Mediterranean people, so uh, we don't like being uh, uh, only indoors, but uh, we like very much the outdoors, uh, outdoor activities. Uh, this is um, probably uh, something in our soul uh, because we have so much sun uh, all year round. And uh, also at our schools in the morning, uh, the kids uh, are uh, doing uh, many outdoor activities and uh, uh, also uh, activities uh, uh, to um, that focus in the pre-working uh, abilities uh, of the kids, and uh, then uh, uh, we are in the same uh, in the same way with them in the afternoon and uh, con keeping uh, continuing uh, uh, what they learn in the morning and uh, doing uh, many more things. That's all. Fantastic. And it sounds really encouraging that you've got that partnership across the community, because I don't think that's always the case in certainly in in England. I think these systems become very bureaucratic. So if you can communicate together, then that's very encouraging. I have a question for Yanis next. I, I, don't, I haven't seen any questions. Everybody's, I'm still, everybody's sticking with us, but not asking any questions. So I, you're leaving me to ask the questions. But I, I love the, the little film, Yanis. And, and when you were telling the story of how this all evolved, it sounded like a little mini superhero film in the story. Like you, 
people had a plan and then <laughs> there was a crisis and actually the solution that people came up with was more creative maybe more individual and the 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 images and the superhero images i must admit i'm a big marvel film fan myself uh, me too, as well. <laughs> <laughs> so but but those seem very powerful and very consistent with things that are going on in our culture where people are thinking about um well almost that everybody why can't everybody be a hero <laughs> in a way that we all have and this is in a way what citizen network is trying to say you know everybody everybody is a potential hero everybody is a superhero if we can listen pay attention but i wonder for you just as a filmmaker what what did you experience going in what were your personal feelings going into this process and going through obviously with this almost a crisis and then creating a new solution uh, well, I really enjoyed all this, the, the journey of the, of the film because uh, uh, those children had a dynamic as a team. Uh, it was already a team before I started filming. Uh, that was uh, the reason that uh, helped me very much to, 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 to take a camera and capture everything is what it was going on. Uh, uh, it was uh, re I really enjoyed all this process, and uh, I hope uh, again and again, uh, maybe in the future, we should uh, shoot another and another and another uh, with those uh, kids because, first of all, they want it very much, mm -hmm. and if you want something, then you have to do it. It is very important. Uh, of course, art is for everyone. Um, no, no matter, uh, no matter the age, no matter uh, where are you from, no matter their religion, art is for everyone. Yeah, of course. Uh, that's the reason that uh, we decided to put on uh, on the title of the documentary. We say uh, how to train an anti-hero. So if you if you saw the film, the short, uh, the audience should uh, decide. Uh, am I watching anti heroes or superheroes? So we had to make it uh, that the audience uh, should uh, decide are really superheroes, perhaps. Fantastic. And of course, we had to put on some uh, magic dust, as I'm saying, uh, with all these uh, costumes, with uh, all these uh, smoke generators uh, behind them, uh, with all these uh, colors. Yeah, it was a fantastic experience and I really enjoyed it. Uh, so I, I'm going to take from that a question for Evie. Um, so in your presentation, one of the things that struck me was the way you talked about, uh, which as Yanis has just touched on, that, that there was a group, that the group dynamic is very important. And this is a thing that we've discussed in the Day Centers Without Walls program, isn't it? Because sometimes the idea of inclusion seems to be um, associated with individualization but actually fun love the things that give us strength are more social than that so um i mean i was interested that you you st started there this idea and maybe you could tell us a little bit about where this thinking has come from and what does it mean for you all now that there's something special here i think uh you know, I, I think that uh, we all can agree that uh, people need to be individual, but uh, we are social animals. We cannot be by ourselves. And uh, in my opinion, uh, the more uh, bonds you create with other uh, people, the more stronger you can feel. It's something that works, that works vice versa. Uh, I am individual, I am self-confident, and uh, this self-confidence comes from me being a member of a group. The group gives me the power to feel individual. And uh, through the group, 
I think that that works better in a group because through the group, I will see other individuals respect my opinion. So respect my existence, uh, respect my needs, uh, what uh, I have to say, uh, even if what I have to say is not something very important, uh, but uh, life is uh, in the details. So uh, when you learn to respect and being respected, uh, almost automatically you feel an individual because you feel that someone listens and someone can listen and get listened only if there is a group. It's like the tree uh, in the forest. If it falls down, if no one can be there, yeah, does actually have fallen. Uh, you have you must have someone to talk to so that you can feel an individual. And uh, this is very important for us because this is how we establish the, the safe environment that uh, children can flourish because uh, they do feel safe here. Is uh, uh, People uh, are the same, uh, the facilities are the same, the children are, um, are the same, but uh, sometimes we have new entries uh, and uh, we don't go out with uh, new people until we have already established a bond between the group. Because when we're going to be out, uh, it's not only that we have to, to do things, but also we have to keep in mind to be respectful, to know uh, how to talk, uh, to, know, to have those social skills. And of course, the social skill uh, the skills of uh, going out uh, by itself. I have to cross the road. Uh, there are too many things uh, that are done simultaneously, but uh, everything is a part of it. And we have, uh, uh, we teach the children through and for these parts. So uh, it's very, very crucial to have a group that feels safe the members uh, feel safe between uh, in the group. I don't know if I answered or... Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. That, oh, well, one of the things that I loved about your answer was, so my I, my training is a philosopher, and I can hear philosophy and, and deeper thinking in everything you're saying. <laughs> I mean, you've got, you start with Aristotle... Thank you so much. You're a social animal, but also <laughs> also that that image of the tree falling in the forest is very powerful, isn't it? I mean, if our lives are unseen, in a way we don't exist, do we? We have to we have to be with others to to exist, really. Um, so so this is a so I mean, there's so many questions, and I'm going to kind of end with a very big question which is for all of you um maybe it's a hard question i don't know what you will say but so i'm interested in where this depth of thinking comes from i don't mean to um be silly but uh you know day centers if you go and certainly in my country if you go to a day center for people with intellectual disabilities, you may not be inspired. Many are very closed in places. Great people, but really inclusion isn't part of the story. And, and sometimes it's, it feels a bit, um, it doesn't have the energy and creativity that you've described. Let's put it that way. So I wonder, what, could you, maybe each of you think about from your different perspectives, you know, where does the fire come from, the heat, to keep things good and true? And that question's for all of you and anybody can start or. Uh, I would like to start uh, by saying that um, for many, many years, um, I think that uh, my experience uh, showed uh, that uh, being a teacher of uh, a special uh, education school with really severe 
disabilities. And I understand what you're talking about. Uh, we had students and we have students that don't speak, that are have difficult behaviors, that it's difficult to uh, take them out to the community. Um, what I had realized that you just have to believe it. I, I really believe it. You know, I, I always uh, think when I have a, a student that uh, uh, has serious problems, uh, I believe in him and I think that everybody can do something. At, at our school, uh, we always tried uh, to do things with all the children, even if they were functional, even if they were low functional. No, it, it didn't mean that um, they couldn't do things. And uh, I think that I'm really passionate because um, uh, I interact with these people and uh, I interact with the, these students and uh, I have seen um, many things and uh, uh, I'm sure that they can do it. I just, I'm, I'm not just saying it. I have seen it, you know, I have seen it. it, it it's something True, if you put a, a, a person with a, a mental disability, a intellectual disability in a, in a home center, a, a center and you don't work with him, you don't believe in him, oh, of course he won't do anything, okay. But uh, really my experience is that uh, all this brings only happiness to us and to the children. I believe it and I have seen it, that's it. So nobody can tell me it can't be done. That's all. Anybody else? Um, I, I will start. Uh, uh, I don't know, I'm not a philosopher. Uh, but I, I will say that it's magical to work with uh, people with uh, disabilities. And um, uh, some of us, uh, me and Eleni and Pavlos, uh, know disability through our kids first. Uh, but uh, there was a, a hidden power that uh, made us uh, being uh, special being special educators uh, and uh, working uh, with uh, uh, other ages and uh, people uh, with uh, very different uh, difficulties uh, uh, of our children um, i think that um, it's something uh, that has to do with uh, taking and giving uh, this is uh, magical and uh, this is uh, that uh, make us uh, makes us so happy uh, because um, when uh, we give one, we take 10 back. Maybe we take uh, thousands. Thank you, Irene. Presto. So, uh, Yanis, Evie, would either of you, what's your sense, Yanis, maybe? Yes, well, I think it's uh, all, uh, it's all about uh, of work. If you believe uh, to them, if you believe in people with disabilities, then something uh, good, something magical will happen. Uh, something in the world will change if we are going to believe in people with disabilities. Uh, they want just a little bit uh, longer, uh, talking about the time as a, a person, talking about the theater for uh, typical development, and uh, talking about the theater with people with disabilities, it's uh, all matter of work, both of them. But uh, the people with disabilities, uh, they have to, uh, the, the educators to, to work with them a little bit longer. That's all. Uh, it was uh, only a little bit longer. And um, I think this is a good effort for global education to, to rethink about not here, not only in here in Greece, but uh, worldwide to think about people with disabilities and uh, why uh, they are socially excluded from arts. Uh, here in Greece, sadly, I will talk uh, as I am a, 
uh, as I live here in Greece, uh, sadly, few people with disabilities uh, doing theater. So, I, I yes, I think it is all the time. Uh, it's all time. Uh, it's uh, it's about work. It's about work, work, work. We have to believe to them and work. Thank you, Yanis. Makes me think of my friend Marilyn, who introduced me to this world many years ago. She said, people with intellectual disabilities will save the world. Like, if we can do the work necessary together to create inclusion, we will do the work to save the tackle the other big problems we face, won't we? But if we don't do that work together, what kind of world will we create? Evie. What's your uh, I, uh, I think that uh, Irini, Eleni, and Yanis, uh, I totally agree. Um, what I would like to add is that in a day center, yes, you can be very closed, uh, very not open <laughs> to uh, uh, other things. Uh, the fact that uh, we go outdoors is because of the abilities of these children here uh, and because of the inclusion. They can do so much, so so many things that it's a little bit uh, shame to keep them indoors. We will be out because uh, we can and uh, we, are, uh, we have to work with the inclusion and the community interaction, which is very important. Uh, maybe because I'm a social worker, I'm so obsessed with uh, community interaction, I'm sorry, but uh, I think that is very, very important. So the abilities and the community interaction is uh, what takes us outdoors and uh, prepares us for the labor market later. I would like also, I would like also to say that uh, the people, people with disabilities uh, have the power of truth because they don't know, uh, they only know how to be true and um, they are the genuine and uh, the original side of uh, uh, human beings that uh, don't uh, say lies, uh, that uh, are always smiling. Uh, uh, it, um, in fact, is uh, what uh, people should be. And if we come back and um, uh, see our, our roots and uh, uh, see inside us, uh, we will understand that uh, this is uh, why um, they are um, so attractive to all the people that work with people with, uh, in, with, people with disabilities. I would like uh, to help to um, uh, say thanks to Flora Sumanaki also, because she's uh, uh, in our team that uh, she helped us, uh, uh, she helped our uh, people uh, to the, th to the anti-heroes uh, to um, uh, work, uh, she worked with them and uh, we trusted her and uh, thank you, Flora. Thank you. <laughs> I am here, I'm, I'm listening to you. Fantastic. Thank you. <laughs> well, that is a very good point to end. We, we perfectly managed our time. Well done. <laughs> I think we have lots of interesting material and information. We will put all of this up on the Citizen Network website in the next few days. If you have other things you want to share that we can share, uh, send them through. Um, we will have things in English, but we can also share things in Greek on the site and in other languages. So we, uh, we just want to get that information out there. So Thank you, everyone. Thank you to all the presenters. Thank you to all the participants. Um, I hope to see you all again, maybe see some of you in the real world one day. Goodbye for now. Thank you. Bye. Simon. Thank you, everyone. Also, we thank Nicholas. We thank yes, Nicholas Simon scenes, yeah. for the help. Great help. <laughs>